noise coming in hello good, uh, good evening from nigeria i'm super excited to host this webinar on boarding house administration please mute your mics everybody so that there's no distraction i can hear as i can hear um, a whole lot so i might have to mute everybody um, I think so I need everyone. Okay, so I've muted everyone. All right, so good evening, good afternoon, good morning from wherever you're joining us. I am Nancy Akpezu, and it's such a pleasure to host this webinars. Yeah, well, I'm saying webinars because there'll be two days, today and tomorrow. Today, the 16th of December, 2021 and tomorrow the 17th of December, 2021. So I think it's just the right time for us to start having conversations around boarding house administration. This boarding didn't start today. I actually had the boarding about three years ago and two years ago, I took a step to write a book um, called Effective Boarding House Administration, um, which I decided to release just recently. And incidentally, um, it's getting a lot of attention because of the you know, um, circumstances we found ourselves towards the end of this year. And I would like to say that it's such an honor to be the one hosting you. There are several other people doing amazing work on this already, and we do not undermine anybody's effort. We are all working together as a team. So it's such a privilege and an honor to have you right here. So I'm going to go on to start sharing my screen right away. And um, I'm going to just um, start so that we don't spend too much time um, talking about things that are irrelevant and we'll go on straight to the business of the day. Okay, so, so the topic is boarding house administration. And I'd, I'd like to introduce myself officially to those who have never met me. I'm Nancy Akpezu and I'm the lead consultant at Pezu Smith Consulting. I'm all, I've worked in the education space for over 25 years, 27 years now. And I've been a school administrator in four reputable schools and um, three of which were boarding schools. So I actually have in-house and in-depth knowledge about how school administration is done in the boarding houses. On my last job, I led a team of over a hundred people in a group of schools managed by a reputable multinational. And I'm the author of three books, Dear Educator, The School Administrator's Companion, and my latest book, Effective Boarding House Administration, which is currently on pre-order. I also serve as a board member in two schools and one other organization, which is the Global um, Training Academy in Saudi Arabia. I'm a TEDx speaker and I've spoken at several reputable um, conferences and summits. I'm a chartered administrator, I'm a management and education consultant. I'm also a certified life coach. And so we are going to start right away. So that's me and that's why you should listen to me. So what do you intend to learn today? We are going to introduce us to guidelines for boarding house operations. You will get to see that a lot of those things are things that you already know and perhaps did not quite pay attention to. And we say, um, usually in, in management, that is not enough to know, you must practice. Okay, so we also need to understand, this will also help us to understand the policies and produce procedures that every boarding house should have. And then we'll need to um, emphasize the need for record keeping and understand the various records which must be kept in a boarding school. Just like you have the admin office in a school, there's also some kind of mini administration that goes on in the boarding house. And so you get to know the documents that you must keep um, to run a boarding house successfully. We'll also touch on some sensitive issues in the boarding house, which will include catering and bullying, and of course the, the issue of supervision, okay? And then we'll answer questions that you might have about boarding house management and operations. And at the end, I'll introduce you to resources for boarding house administration. So please make sure you stay till the end 
uh, because I'll be making an announcement as well. Okay, so um, let's go on to the business of the day. So just like you have guidelines for every part of the, of the school, the boarding house is not exempt from, oh, a lot of people are just joining. Um, the boarding house is not exempt from, um, from having, having rules and having um, um, guidelines for operations. So I'm going to run us through the guidelines for operating a boarding house. What are the things that will guide you in operating a boarding house? Hello, is everybody hearing me? Okay. Yes, we are. Yes, okay, we are. I just wanted to be sure because the internet is behaving a little funny and there are some people just joining and causing a whole lot of distractions. I, I said I was going to just put this on permanent um, admit and um, mute everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so my screen is paused, so I have to continue to, to share. Share, resume share, okay. So there are guidelines for operating a boarding house and we're going to look at them. The first thing you need to do is to define what you want your boarding house to be known for. Yes, it's fine that it is a place that provides um, a roof over the heads of the boarders as they come in to um, you know, interact with, your, um, with, with the school and also to receive um, lessons. But a boarding house should be more than that. It's not just a place to keep children and to, um, and to um, feed them, or to give them a bed space and feed them. I've actually met parents who I interviewed and I asked them why they made a choice of a certain boarding house. And I'm going to tell you a few things they said. One parent told me, well, and I, I, I've always met kids from this particular school, maybe at the airport when I'm traveling or at events or you know, occasions. And I just like the way they relate, the self-confidence that they exude. It means that a school like that probably focuses on building the self-esteem of the students that are under their care. I've also heard one tell me, oh, well, I like the, the way my child speaks English because of the association in the boarding house. It means maybe there's, there's some kind of grooming or you know, um, classes, extra classes that a school gives, maybe for public speaking or for whatever. Okay, so you must define that, okay, this is what we, we need, we want to be known for. This is what we want to own as ours. Whenever people associate, uh, whenever people mention um, XYZ school or their boarding house, they should think of maybe well-groomed kids who are well-cultured, who understand social skills, who are well-mannered or who place morals above you know, um, other things or who understand empathy, or how, to re how to treat other people, or who, ha who have been groomed in their work ethics because they saw that happening among the staff that worked with them. Okay, so those are the things that you need to consider. What exactly do you want to be known for? Write it down and make it a vision for your boarding house. In other words, be very intentional about the products you want to turn out not just in your school, but for those specifically who, are, who actually come under the roof of your boarding house. So I'm sure I'm clear on that. Develop a statement of boarding house practice for your school. Quite a number of, a lot of schools do not have this. I've had a chance to talk with school administrators and school owners, and this always comes as a surprise to them because they'll say, well, we already have a vision for the school. Why do we need to define anything again for the boarding house. And I'm always quick to tell them that you need to be very intentional. So be very intentional from the get go. And if you have not been after this webinar, you should be able to sit down as a team and review what exactly you want your boarding house to be known for. Number two, you need to put in place welfare and pastoral support for the students. And this includes safeguarding. The truth is anything that goes wrong in a school eventually comes back to the adults. 
So the earlier we, we agreed and we all got, a, you know, get the understanding that, look, no kids should be left unsupervised. It's against um, um, child protection um, regulations or expectations. There must always be proper supervision because whatever trouble the kids get into, well, it eventually comes back to us. Another thing would be to ensure that your facilities are appropriate for and safe for boarding. So that means you should have a proper risk assessment of your boarding house. Is it purpose built for boarding house? If it is purpose built, is it built in a way that allows for supervision? And if it's a rented place that you started with, or even if you built it without the input of somebody who understands um, how a boarding house should be structured, then you might need to go back and have a proper look, have a risk assessment, review the facilities. What can go wrong in these facilities? What are we doing right? Um, on, on this particular side of the hostel, is there enough supervision? Do we have enough, um, enough facilities to cater for all of the students? Do students have to share bed spaces uh, because they have admitted too many above what our facilities can take? So these are things that you need to um, have a look at. So your facilities are very, very important. It's not enough that the facilities look aesthetically beautiful, but it is very important that it's functional for what we need it for, which is to house students and to make sure that they are safe, okay? Is it near the bush? Where snakes can easily come in? If it is, what precautions have we taken? Is there frequent fumigation and checks and the doors? Are they done in a way that no snake can go under? You know, some boarding houses are built in very um, isolated places, sometimes close to a bush or a forest, just to make sure the kids are away from, uh, you know, everything going on in the city so that they can concentrate on their studies. But the truth is it also comes with the danger because then you could have a scorpion creeping to the facilities, you could have a snake creeping or whatever, even animals from the bush. So you have to be very careful to ensure that you do a risk assessment of the entire facilities and then come up with recommendations, what you can do better and what already is working and everything that could go wrong or right, okay? Then develop policies and procedures for everything that happens in the boarding house and let this be communicated to everyone. It's not enough to have policies and procedures. I know a lot of schools will say, yes, I have, we have policies, we have procedures, and so we are fine. But you'll be surprised that even the staff that should implement those policies do not even know what the policies are because they do not have the policy manuals. Okay, the procedures have not been given to them to guide them. So you must have policies for everything you do in the boarding house. You must have procedures. What is your admission procedure like? Before a child comes into the boarding house, what and what and what do you do? What and what and what do you not do? So all of these are very, very important. You have to get it right. Then develop, um, so, the, um, so this must be, apart from having those policies and procedures developed, they must be properly communicated to the students, the staff, the management team, um, the, the, um, the, 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 the board members, and everybody who is associated with the boarding house in one way or the other. You must also have effective means of timely communication with the stakeholders. Have a means of timely communication, and I'm going to explain. You must have a means of timely communication with the stakeholders. So for example, if you, are, if you are running a boarding house and something goes wrong, who do you report to? Is there, is there a weekly report that goes out from you? For example, when I had a school or my last job, for example, one of the first things that it was to put in place a weekly report. And I, you don't just tell me, oh, everything is fine with the children age well. There are, quite, there are various parameters, things that I need to hear about. And aside from that, you must also hear from the children. So there must be proper means of timely communication with all stakeholders. And these stakeholders include the students, include the staff, the board members, the parents, 
everyone who is associated with the boarding house in one way or the other. Then you cannot run a boarding house without, without partnership with the parents. It's almost impossible, in fact, really impossible, because you must have inputs from them. I shared on a radio program yesterday, I was asked one or two questions, because I've been having quite a number of them since my book was announced. And I said that the, you know, the input of parents needs to be really emphasized in a boarding house. Because the truth is, these children come to the boarding house parents, or all the staff who work there, already formed from home. And it is what they, what they bring from home that they, take, they bring to the boarding house. And there's no magic that happens with the boarding house staff to totally change these children um, you know, at, the, at the flip of a finger. It just doesn't happen that way. And so the parents need to make sure that they work closely with you. I give an instance where a child actually was involved with bullying other students. Two children were involved with bullying others. And then I, I invited the parent of one. And because I told this boy that his parents were coming to have a meeting with us and he was invited to the meeting, he was shaking all through from the moment he was brought from his class to that meeting. And after that meeting with his parents, please mute. After that meeting with his parents, that was the end of him misbehaving in the boarding house because he felt very embarrassed to have his parents to be called into a meeting where he was, I mean, he's, I mean, the principal, the school administrator and everybody, and this will be documented, you know? So that made him very embarrassed. And then he started behaving very the opposite of the, of the other one, whose parents were invited and didn't show up. In fact, showed up at the end of the term. The meeting had to be held at the end of the term because that was when she turned up, you know, with the, with the father of the child. And I had all kinds of excuses why she couldn't come for the two weeks and blah, 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 blah. And that had been the attitude. And so for such a parent, you would not be surprised to see the children behaving the way that they did. So the partnership with parents is very, very important in running a boarding house. And you have to let them know at the point of admitting their children into the boarding house that you have a role to play and that this role is very, very important. Then ensure to work with the right staff, qualified and willing to do the job. You know, um, You are muted, ma. You are muted, Mrs. Madam Nancy. You are muted. Unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Okay. I'm so sorry. Oh. I just realized that. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, yes. Okay, I'll take that again. So I was sharing about 
two students. Talking about two students whom I have to who I have to invite their parents. Two of them misbehave. Uh, mute, 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 mute. Okay, so two of them were invited. Uh, I invited their parents, and then this particular to them was very remorseful because the parents showed up immediately and they always took things about and any news about him in the boarding house very seriously. I was talking about partnership with parents. And he was even crying, he said, please, Miss Nancy, don't invite my parents. I'm going to miss, I'm going to stop misbehaving. If my parents know about this, I'm going to be really, really sad. And he really was sad because as soon as we invited his parents, his, um, his, his attitude just changed. He felt embarrassed to have his mom and dad coming to a meeting where we were discussing his behavior, okay, his misbehavior. And for, for, that, for that reason alone, he made sure he behaved himself, you know, until I left the school. Now, this other child whose parents we kept inviting that would not come, you know, he had nothing to hold him from misbehaving because even the restraint his parents should help to give him wasn't there. I mean, he just dined all consequences like, well, what is the big deal? After all, if you invite my dad and mom, they won't even come. And the parents came at the end of the term. And then, when we, of course, eventually we had to advise them to take the boy to some other school because he was becoming a little, you know, it was a handful for us and becoming not too good influence on the other children. becoming a not too good influence on the other children. So I'm talking about the role of parenting, okay? How, how partnership, homeschool connection and partnership must never, never be ignored in the boarding house because it can make your work a whole lot easier. So you must have a way of communicating with the parents regularly in a way that they make an input in what you're doing and also, you know, help to um, talk to the children. All right, so I'm going to go on to continue sharing the slides now. Okay, so that's partnership with the parents. So I show to work with the right and qualified staff. You know, we see a lot of um, those old matrons. I'm sure you know the kind of matrons we had if you went to a boarding school. That was fine then, but believe me, in modern day boarding houses, the children will outsmart those kind of people very easily because they do not even understand what's going on in the 21st century. These kids are full of intrigues and we urge you that when you're employing, you make sure that you, you get people who are at least conversant with what is going on, you know, who have more of a global mindset, who understand the internet and what exactly is going on with the children and where their interests really lie and how they can handle them. And apart from getting this right, this stuff, you must train them. Recently, I just, I just finished recruiting for a top school in Abuja and I, 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 I advertised for two boarding house. Um, parents, we had about 157 applications for just two positions. That's how many people wanted to be boarding um, parents. And then when I checked their CVs, I saw that some were just people who had finished youth service, some didn't have a job, I just, want, I just thought that was a way to while away their time. Apart from ignoring, apart from rejecting these candidates, I had to call them up to let them know why they were not the right candidate. And that the boarding house is not a place no, where you just get accommodation just because you're going to live with the children and you've had problems with accommodation. Then you say, okay, at least I have a roof over my head and they'll be feeding me there along with the children. No, 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 no. We have to look at your CV and be sure that this is something you have done before now and that it is something you're comfortable to do and that you're making a career out of it because it is something to be taken seriously. And apart from that, please do a background check from the schools they are coming from. Are they running away from other boarding houses because they caused problems there or injured a child or were involved with abuse or whatever? Because this is a very delicate job and you cannot afford to just have 
a, a 20 minute interview with someone and say, okay, we like you just moving. Please be very thorough and do a check on the kind of people that are coming. There must be people who fit into the boarding house and can do the job and have the right attitude and the skills to do it. In addition, have, um, have emergency plans. For fire, we have fire drills, you know, things for, you know, um, drill them what would happen if they kidnapper get marauders or in, in, um, people are, are actually coming to the hostel, maybe for the purpose of kidnapping or whatever. You must continue, you know, con constantly have drills on all of these things. Then you must have a way to keep their money because, you know, their pocket money is not something to play with. As little as it is, it can cause problems in a school. Who keeps, their, who keeps their pocket money? How is it shared? In some schools, you have to maybe make up, get them into um, um, what we call um, into vouchers so that they don't actually have physical cash on them. And those vouchers, they sometimes the school prints names on them. It depends on the class of school. Some schools have their names printed on those vouchers. And then the, par the parents just pay the money to the accountant and get the vouchers for their children. So that each, every voucher has the child's name written on them and nobody can take another person's vouchers to spend. Okay, so have care for your, for your pupils. And of course, um, that includes, and do you have special needs? Do you bring in people um, that have children who have special needs? How do you cater for them if you do? You must have parental permission and consent for high risk acti activities. Don't take children out for swimming without consent from their parents. Don't take them out on excursions without consent from their parents. Don't get them involved in things that their parents do not know about that you'll be doing in the boarding house. So don't just stay and get too excited and say, okay, this weekend we are taking all the borders out. All of the consent should have been signed at the point of admission so that the parents give their consent that whenever you're going out, yes, you can take their child along. Not every child, every parent wants their kids exposed outside the school. Maybe some of them are uh, politicians and they have um, opponents. Who, who might have people um, eyeing them and trying to watch what they do and all of that. So you need to be very careful when you handle people's children. Okay, so we're going to look at, those were guidelines. We're going to look at areas where you must have policies. And like I said, these areas are not exhaustive. There'll be several others that you can think of as you keep running your boarding house. You must have anti-bullying policies and procedures. Not just because of what happened recently, but because this is actually a must in every boarding house. If people are going to live peacefully, then you must have anti-bullying policies and procedures that are well taught to the staff, to the students, and even to the parents, and properly documented. Apart from the policies, you must have procedures for reporting. Who handles issues? Who reports to who? You have an email. What is Excuse me, what if the, parent, the staff refuse to um, um, send in reports of bullying, maybe to the principal or the school administrator? What action can you take? Can you go as far as even having an email address, maybe with um, um, where, the, where the PTA is a custodian, such that students can feel free to send in reports to such places and their, uh, um, their, their, their um, the privacy is actually protected. So you must have anti-bullying policies and take action. Your action should also include training children on social skills. It's not enough to keep punishing them for what they do wrong. You must also involve what they should be doing right. And this should protect the staff and also um, and the students. My internet is a bit unstable, but I'm sure you can hear me. So you have health issues, medical issues, things about medication. You know, it's not enough to just know that a child can be given paracetamol. Please know that not everybody in school has the right to do that. And nurses in schools have their limits. So you do not go to a boarding house and say, this child is sick. Let me just give him anti-malarial um, um, drugs to take. Please never, never do that, no matter what it is. Always have make sure that there is a nurse and that there is actually a hospital designated for referrals 
should there be things that the nurse cannot or should not handle so that you take them there and do it promptly. If there is one area in the school that can put a school in trouble, it is medical and health issues. And you must never joke with it. At the point where children come to your school, please ensure that they have a medical um, insurance. For example, the schools where, where I've been an administrator, we had medical insurance, which were paid annually. And from there, we had designated hospitals where they could be referred to. And you make sure you have ones that are close to your school. Have admission procedures. I'm sure I mentioned that earlier. And then have them policies that handle this and come back. Have policies that handle this and come back. Sorry, I'm trying to see who that is. Please mute yourself. Okay, so you must have policies for recruitment. For even recruitment of the staff that you bring to the boarding house. You are disturbing the class. Please, if anybody is making too much noise, I may be forced to remove them because we're recording. Kitty Love, are you mute? Oh, sorry, you mute them. Okay. Okay, so I'm trying to locate who exactly is doing this. Please, can you mute everybody? His name is Wally of how are you? Good evening. How's that? Bring my food, Joe. Bring my food. Yem, yem food. Yem food, me. Come if you are there, something here. No, we are much like this. We are better like this. Madam Nancy, you can you can do an automatic muting. Mute everybody. Mute everybody's mic. You can do it since you are here. Some of them just join now. Together. Just do it automatically, please. I've been doing that over and over. And then some just join in and start uh, making noise again. Okay, sorry about that. So you must have um, policies that guard your recruitment, use of cell phones. Um, the boarding house should have cell phones where reports are made. And um, where students can also call their parents or the parents can call them. And then the use of internet, what are your policies around that? What are the rights and responsibilities of the boarding students? Then of course, security for personal belongings. Have you talked to the children about, you know, um, keeping to their own belongings and not bullying others to collect theirs? You must have things in place and how students report and even the items that you allow or disallow in the boarding house. And then policies that guard around their food and nutrition. What are your, what's your, your menu? Um, how do they feed? Everybody must be in the boarding house. Is a rule in boarding houses. You do not allow, you do not um, allow students to take food into the rooms because part of the training in the boarding house is actually dining hall etiquette, okay? Dining etiquette and so, you must enforce everything about food and nutrition. Then for travel policy, leave and travel. I'm sure you're all familiar with the exit cards already. Every school should have that. And then for excursions, for sexual harassment, for drug use policy, um, just in case you're not aware, you've not kept your ears to the ground. The use of drugs by students is increasing even in boarding houses. And the reports are that some of the drugs are brought in by hostile marshals which is sad enough. And sometimes by the gate men, who people do not suspect, or the cleaners, the laundry people. So you must have drug use policy. So even if adults take drugs or they smoke or drink, this should not be allowed on campus, even by adults. In schools where I'm an administrator, 
the parent, the teachers do not smoke, no staff members smoke on campus or drink alcohol or use uh, nicotine, toba uh, tobacco, or anything that, you know, we do not want the kids to, to emulate. So dress code. Some schools have a boarding house dress code. Mostly they check and some do not. I worked in a school that had no boarding uniform and the kids were allowed to wear their jeans and um, you know, just t-shirts and bring different colors of them to use. I've also worked in boarding houses where we had uniforms I mean, had to do checks and everybody had to sew a certain style for uniformity. And of course, we must have the code of conduct for the borders and staff and consequences that, you know, um, that go with um, flouting each of those um, um, codes of conduct. Then supervision is a very key thing you mustn't joke with, okay? So effective supervision starts with getting the right staff with the right skills and attitude. And I've mentioned that before. You cannot be um, getting, you cannot be expecting the best from people who are not even trained or who are not the right people. So to get even the best in the boarding house, the first thing you have to consider apart from the facilities is getting the right staff. People who are ready to do the job and with the right attitude. Then train them properly on what effective supervision is. Please do not assume. The practice in a lot of schools is that they may train the teacher, they have orientation for teachers, teach them about the curriculum, about 21st century skills, and then the children at the boarding house staff are just brought in. And normally the conversation goes like this. You know, you're a parent now, so you should understand the children. Please, they're in your care, do the best for them. And their best may actually not be good enough because they do not even understand. So you must have a proper orientation for them, proper onboarding, where they are also taught what supervision is, what the expectations of the boarding house is. Additionally, prepare a roster and let it be communicated to all stakeholders. Do spot checks as an administrator or principal or head of boarding. Always do spot checks. Even though I've never been residential, uh, residential okay, I have been um, in, in one of the schools, but the other schools, even, um, even, even the staff quarters was outside of the um, boarding house for the top management team. Only the boarding house members were allowed in there. But I, I, I always drove in at odd hours to have spot checks. Sometimes as early as 6 a.m., I'll just get in there and see what the children are doing and have a meal with them so that I eat with them, okay? And so the reports that come to you either from the principal or the head of boarding or the vice principal administration may be missing out some little details which you can do, which you can observe by yourself by just doing spot checks. And never let them know when you're coming, just drive in. It could be for evening prep, it could be after school, you just stay back in your office and take a walk to the boarding house, have a check on everything and interview the students right there and let them tell you what's going on. Okay, and then cross check with what's going on um, from the reports from your subordinates and those managing the boarding houses. Because from, my, from experience, sometimes when ugly things happen, they try to cover it up so that they look like they're doing the best job. And I always tell them, well, if anything happens that goes beyond that, then it will blow up in the open. So it's always good that we nip things in the board when things go wrong. So have regular reports from the staff in the boarding house. A weekly report is, is recommended. And you must have items on the report that must be reported, one of which is relationship with the students, issues with bullying, um, um, medical issues, and um, um, feeding, um, you know, just everything, this behavior, the academics, where they complain from teachers, all of this should be in the reports. So there are certain key thing, items that must be in the weekly reports. So don't let them just send you, oh, we praise God for the week, everything was fine. Have a template where they must fill in details. And some of them must have figures to be able to say who were the ones taken away, who took permission to be away, what was the reason? And then um, who was ill, what was done? Were there emergencies? Were, are there things that you know, we need to know about? And all of this should be documented. Disciplinary issues taken against students and things like that. And very importantly, hear directly from the students. You might want to do this, this helps very much. You might want to keep some candies in your office or cookies or some chocolate. That way they will always want to come to your office to pick a candy or a, a chocolate or cookie. 
I mean, they come, you can just informally interview them. Don't make it sound like one big thing that you're meeting with them, what is going on. Just from, you know, chit chat here, we'll also get to hear from them. Additionally, give them your email address where they can send reports to directly. Even though you hear from the boarding house staff, also have a way for the students to report directly to you. Because there may be some things that, you know, the, there may be a gap in the reports you're getting and what the students will also reveal to you. Then very importantly, have an effective performance management system for the boarding house. Very important. All the staff at the point where they are, at, are, are offered employment to the boarding house, let them know that they'll be evaluated every term and that the children will also make an input in that evaluation. So, and part of it must be supervision and whether they actually check the food and other things that they are meant to do for the children. So because you might not be there 24 hours, you must let the kids also have a say in that evaluation. Okay, so if body house staff know that they'll be properly evaluated and that there are laid down parameters for their evaluation, it will make them sit up because they are retaining their jobs will depend on their performance. It will be performance driven for retention. So it will not just be business as usual. People just coming out, are you performing? Yeah, yes, how are they? It must be measurable. In this area of supervision, how many children broke their arms while playing football. What happened? Was there any, any staff there? If they were not there, what, why were they not supervised? So everything about what their roles are in their job descriptions should now be brought into their performance um, objectives and then they're evaluated on them. Like I said earlier, have a risk assessment and then involve parents. Now, there are some records you must keep in the boarding house. Every boarding house must have some records. And I'm going to go through some of them now. You must have a staff handbook that guides the, board, the operations of the boarding house and spells out the code of conduct and you know, the, everything, all the policies. You must have a statement of the school's boarding principle and practice. Remember, I mentioned that earlier. So that is always reinforced and we're reminded over and over, even at meetings. You must have complaints procedures. You must have a procedure to enable um, students to make complaints, okay? You must have responses to smoking, drinking, or substance abuse, and what was done to address them. You must have plans for foreseeable crisis, okay? Plans for, um, you know, for, for emergencies and all that. You must have records of staff induction. All the staff who have been employed in the boarding house, how, what were they taught during induction and training and, their, and have a development program for them. It's not a one-off training and you just say, okay, when they took the job, they were trained. Just the same way you train your teachers. I mean, there are courses you recommend. Wow, we just got to know about the use of um, Zoom to teach um, students. Um, we need to send you there on training. It's the same way. You must also continually um, have meetings with the boarding house team to know areas where they need help. And particularly, there are some trainings that every boarding house staff must undergo. And one of them is first aid. They must be able to give first aid. Apart from the nurse doing that, everybody who works in a boarding house should at least be able to offer first aid if there is a need. They must understand to be trained on supervision. They must be trained on record keeping. They must be trained on, um, on report writing because they will have to write reports. You can also train them on communication skills, train them on teenage psychology so that instead of getting angry and continually wanting to box the children, they will understand what goes on in the minds of these teenagers and how they can forge a relationship with them to be able to relate with them better. And then you must also, also have a prefect duties, their powers and responsibilities. So every year, you must have records of who the prefects are, what their duties are, what their responsibilities are, what their boundaries are. Because even some abuse that goes on in schools is actually from the prefects who are not managed properly. I've got reports from here, a prefect took a belt with the, the metal end of the belt and started beeping children on their heads. That's bullying which is mean. And he said he was doing his duty that the boarding house master told him to um, do anything he could to control 
um, the children, which is wrong. How properly I'm written information for new brothers. So the orientation of the brothers must also be documented um, um, annually. Have job descriptions for all the staff that work in the boarding house. And of course, have records for every, every child who comes to the boarding house. Have a child protection policy manual. Incidentally, the Lagos State has a policy manual for child protection, but a lot of people do not know it. And if you're, I don't know if Abuja has, but I know about Lagos because I have a copy. And if you're not in Lagos, you can adapt the one from Lagos and see how you can, how you can tweak it to suit your own place. Okay? So child protection allegations or concerns, those are um, reports, major sanctions, individual border records, then administration of medication and treatment and first aid. Remember that we have a nurse who works in the school generally. For example, if you have day and boarding, but there must be a nurse who stays, who spends the night in case of emergencies so that they can handle a few things and then also be able to you know, take the child um, to the hospital that is designated for referrals. So never have a boarding house without a nurse. As a matter of fact, you should also have um, a driver and I'm going to come to that when we look at staffing. So this is a relevant training that your boarding house should have. And like I said, don't train them one off. It must be regular training. Just like you have um, uh, training to start the term, do the same for the boarding house team on the relevant areas that they need to know uh, for the boarding house. So proper orientation and onboarding, train them on supervision skills, train them on child protection and safeguarding, train them on record keeping, train them on report writing, train them on team building, on parenting skills, first aid, risk assessment, communication skills, and any other one where you notice a gap, even in teenage psychology, anything at all that will help them deliver on their jobs should be included, okay? Then this, there are a few sensitive areas that we need to look at in the boarding house. Every boarding house has some areas, they know some sensitive issues to deal with. And one of them is, is um, bullying. Incidentally, even though there are policies that you know against bullying, you must take proactive steps to curb bullying, um, bullying in your boarding houses. So I recommend that you have effective school policies on bullying, which we mentioned earlier, and we should protect both the staff and the students. Please know that these days, even children can abuse the staff. So the, the, the bullying policy is not only for the children. You should also protect the staff because a child can be so well that he can bully, and he can actually bully the staff. I conducted an interview, like I said earlier, um, um, just recently for a school in Abuja, and one of the candidates told me how a child who was brought in from the US um, to the boarding house and didn't like it because the parents didn't tell him earlier that they would leave him in Nigeria. And they just told him after bringing him and settling everything. And they now um, they had hinted it to him, but he didn't want it. And so when he settled in, he was so aggressive. And on one of the days he slapped the boarding house uh, marshal. Now that is, also, that is actually bullying a boarding house staff. So the boarding house, the bullying policy must also protect the boarding house staff. And measures should also be taken that they are safe, not just um, the staff bullying the students, which happens a lot though, or the students bullying other students. It must be to protect students against students, staff from students, students from staff. And it must be communicated to everyone, the students, the staff, the management, the board members, everybody involved, okay? So, and like I said earlier, Lagos State has a um, child protection and safeguarding manual, and you must um, look out for it. And I don't know if Abuja has one, like I said, but I do know Lagos has. I suppose Abuja should have. So you might want to ask if your school is in Abuja or wherever your state is, and find out if your state has developed a child protection and safeguarding manual that you can go through to help your, your patients in that area. And then specify how incidents should be reported. Should it be by email, in person? You have a Google form for it, or are they written um, 
um, reports or forms that they can use, or do you allow any of these, any of the above? All of this should be stated. And the officers or personnel that they should report to must also be clearly stated. So who should the students report to when they are bullied? Who should the staff report to when they are bullied? Because another staff could also bully, um, a staff could bully another staff, or students could bully the staff. State how reports should be investigated. Okay, how long will it take usually? State the disciplinary action to be taken against those who bully and ensure to clear, include help for the victims and for the victims and also for the bullies. What, what um, socialization methods are you going to use to um, help them, have to teach them the right attitude and behavior um, towards other people instead of constantly bullying them? And ensure to have anti-bullying training and procedures. It's not enough to have them on paper. You can have campaigns regularly. Before that, during the orientation, this should be highly emphasized. And as students come in, it's not just a one-off orientation. Have regular meetings with them where you hear from them, what is really going on. And of course, have counseling also. Include parents in the plan. Remember what I said about homeschool connection and the role of partnership with parents. So your anti-bullying policy must have this. It must have, it must have prohibition on bullying and harassment. It must have prohibition on retaliating against anyone who complains about bullying. It must have prohibition against falsely accusing someone of bullying because that would be a huge offense as well. It's why, why we want to protect those who are bullied. Nobody should accuse somebody who has not bullied them. That is also a huge offense, okay? And it's also a requirement that you tell the school administrator or you can have a designated child protection officer in the boarding house. Some boarding houses have a child protection officer and even assist an assistant, depending on how big that um, school is or the boarding house is. Or it could be reported to the principal. And then there should be a process for keeping it anonymous and a process for looking into the reports of the bullying and coming up promptly with a written response to the outcome of those investigations. And then you must contain the disciplinary action that you take depending on the severity of the bullying and a process for an appeal of the decision um, to take action or, or not against the bully. You must also have a means of communicating to the parents and this should be done uh, promptly. If, another, if a child has injured another child, please don't, don't sweep it under the rug. There must be a proper report. If parents have entrusted their children to you, another child wounds a child, leaves a scar on their skin, it's not a nice thing to send them home at the end of the term and then just um, sweep it under the carpet. You must learn to report things professionally. And then have a procedure for the school to make a report to the police if the bullying is actually a criminal or of a criminal nature. And it, it must emphasize that, that all students have a right to learn in a, in a safe and caring environment without the fear of being bullied. So what works in one school may not necessarily work in another, but there are certain things that are common to all. And that is that all our aim is to ensure that everybody is safe that we live in a safe environment, devoid of the fear of being bullied, whether you're a staff member or whether it is actually um, a, a student that is, you know, um, that is involved. So let's look at staffing. These are not all of the staff that you have. Depending on the size of the boarding house, you might have several other people that are not included here, and I'll just mention some, but basically these are people you should have. There must be, um, there must be residential boarding house parents. If you have, if it's a mixed school, there must be one, um, there must be for males and there must be for the females. You must have a school nurse. It's not enough for the school nurse to stay in the day school and then close with the day students. Someone must be available, that means, if there's no residential nurse, they should run a shift for someone to spend the night, and then the other night, the person will be off. Um, like just like that, one works night, and then you you know you can actually rotate it in a way that that works for you. 
You must have a guardian's counselor. You should have a child protection officer. You should have a living driver and a car designated for emergencies. You should have laundry men. If, they, if the school is such that there are laundry men who come to do laundry, depending on the class of the school, some schools, the, in some schools, the children wash their clothes, wash their own this, while in some, the laundry men wash their uniforms and day wears and church wears while the children wash their own days. You should have cleaners, no. even though, even though- hey, you know, Mr. Hello? Is it stop the spot, it's two o'clock. Hello? Okay. Who will we play? So we what should- What is it play for? Already time, let me come and stop that. You should have all of these. Sorry, I'm trying to mute everybody again. Mute, mute, mute. Okay, so you should have all of these. You should have a guardian's count. So in some schools, the children wash their own days while the laundry men wash the uniforms. While in some, the laundry men wash, uh, while in some, the children wash everything, depending on the class of school. You know, there are all kinds of classes of boarding houses. They are the ones where late, um, they are late, and then they have the ones that, you know, just, you know, um, the regular ones, okay? And then, of course, cleaners. But children should always have their chores and not depend totally on the cleaner. They should learn to make their beds. They should learn to tidy their corners, you know, um, tidy their cupboards and their shelves and everything. This is another sensitive area we're going to look at, which is health and medicals. Ensure medical and health records of the children are sent to the school before admitting any child into the boarding house. As a warning, please never admit a child into your boarding house without properly documented health and medical records. Know their medical history, their health history. Have they had surgeries? Are they on routine drugs? They once had a child who had, who had diabetes, a child of about 11 years had diabetes, and it had to be documented from the doctor's recommendation. Um, we know how often um, the insulin um, injection should be given by the nurse. And the parents had to sign all the agreements before we actually allowed the nurse to be able to give those routine, um, those drugs. So some might have um, asthma, you might have kids who are sickle cellars. You have to be very careful with those sickle cellars. So you, it's, all, it's always better to advise parents to keep their sickle cell kids at home. And that's not discrimination. It's just because they require care and love a bit more than you know, anybody else is not suffering from that. I'm AS, so I'm not, it's not like anything against anybody. I'm also a carrier of sickle cell. And, but the truth is, you must not admit a child without knowing their, their records. You must know their medical their, their records, their health records. Are they asthmatic? Do they have things that need attention? Are there things that have had, they have they had emergencies before? Have they had surgeries? Have they had um, appendicectomy or any other kind of um, um, surgeries? Are they think because of the health situation, are there things they should not eat? Are they allergic to anything? And ensure that the nurse keeps record of all of these things and that they are also known to the how boarding house marshals who live with them just in case of anything. Ensure the school nurse understands his or her job description and must be given a proper orientation. Please, the school nurse is not a doctor. And I need to emphasize that. The school nurse is not a doctor and should not replace a doctor. There are things the school nurse will be able to do for the child or the children in the boarding house, but they must refer cases to a hospital. And that means your school must actually be, must have a hospital that is designated for referrals, which is known to all staff, just in case there has to be a referral or there has to be an emergency. Have a, med a medical plan or insurance for all boarding students. There are plans like Hija, Crusader, so many health plans, okay? Find out the one that works for your school and subscribe to a health, a, medic, a health or medical plan for the students and ensure that it is one that works and make sure you pay the health care providers on time so that they do not turn your students down because they can be very hard 
when you owe them, okay, they can easily turn students down when you do not pay their um, a premium. So have a hospital or clinic for referrals and don't let it be far away from where the school is located. Always make sure it is the nearest best hospital that your school can afford. And then have a consent form, uh, form, sorry, this is form, consent form that parents can fill, that they, you can refer oh, their children to the idea. hospital. That you can refer their children to the hospital for anything or that you need to call them and make sure you communicate with them whenever there is anything going wrong. So don't start treatment on a child and say, oh, the child will be well. Students have died in school from those kind of things. From the, the student, the school saying, oh, we'll just, don't worry, we'll handle everything. And then we'll tell the parents later, no. Please let the parents know what is going on with their children. If a child is ill, a call should be made. Okay, Tunde has been ill since morning. During school hours, he threw up. We have referred to the um, so to him to the clinic. Would you like to come and see him so that they are involved in the process? Someone is unmuted again. Everything. No, I don't understand. That's, you said before that uh, the limit after the. When they are in the back, two of their friends. Uh, uh, so, have medical and medication policies. Nobody should discriminate, um, uh, you know, indiscriminately uh, yeah, 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 yeah. give um, drugs to children in the school. It's not allowed. Oh, Sorry, let me, let me mute everybody yes, again. No, so, yeah. 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 Okay. And then have um, duty rosters for, you know, um, for um, supervisions and all that. Have, um, have reports for accidents and injuries. They must always be reported. Have parental permission for medical and dental treatment. Don't take a child out of the school for them to go and have a tooth extraction and the parents don't know anything. They must be told everything that goes on with their children. Okay, so these are some of the things and I think we can move on. Another sensitive area you need to handle is the feeding of the children. Because even if a school releases the right amount of money for feeding, there's no guarantee that all of it is going into feeding the children. So you must keep an eye on how the foodstuff is um, purchased, where it is stored, and have an idea the quantity of um, a particular, like yams, rice or beans that is used for the boarding house in a week, okay? And then monthly and termly so that you have a proper budget for feeding and try to get things that are in season so that it's cheaper. Usually when foods are in season, they are cheaper to purchase um, than the ones that are out of season because of how storage is in Nigeria. So have a menu for the meals have a proper menu that is uh, age appropriate for the children and ensure the catering staff are also trained and supervised. Just like you train all them, the boarding house marshals, the boarding house parents, please ensure that the boarding house staff are also trained and properly supervised. You might not know this, but a lot of things go on with the food from um, caterers befriending the gate men and giving them food every day so that when they carry things out, Nobody says anything. So you might have your processes in place, but you need to keep an eye on what really goes on. Get reports from the children about the food. Refrain from having children and the kitchen staff feed you as the administrator. Always insist on eating what the children are eating. So for the boarding house parents, you should eat what the children eat. Don't let them serve you special food. Because that is how the compromise comes about that children are now malnourished or underfed in the boarding house. Because they do that to bribe you and then feed the children with something else. So ensure that the supervision involves you insisting that you must be served from the food that the children are eating. So when I'm a school administrator, I do not allow the kitchen staff to come and serve me food in my office. Unless I'm just hungry and I need a meal, and usually I'll insist on paying for it. 
but I do spot checks. I was just walking and see what the children are eating and ask them to serve me right from the one the children are eating so that I can sit with them and eat. And that's how to know what the children are eating. If not, they will serve you all the big pieces of meat, goat meat, cow and beef, and you know, fish, and you'll be so happy and you'll be thinking that's what the children are eating. They might just be serving you special food to bribe you and keep you away from checking what the children are actually eating. So the proper thing would be to do spot checks. And then whenever you do insist on eating and do it regularly, and they must never know how often you do it or when you're going to be there. So it keeps them. And then also the boarding house marshals must always report what exactly is going on um, with the feeding. So refrain from having um, kitchen staff feed you rather do impromptu checks. And another thing I want to bring here, ensure that the boarding house staff have um, what we, um, the, food, uh, the food handlers test. They must take the food handlers test to avoid any outbreak of food poisoning. So do that food hand test. It's usually the responsibility of the nurse and the school administrator or the boarding house supervisor to ensure that the board, all the boarding house staff actually take the, um, the um, food hand last test. It's very important, okay? All right, so like I said, this is not exhaustive. So these areas we have covered, there's a lot more, but I'm going to introduce something to you now. And um, I'm sure by now you must have known that I wrote the book, Effective Boarding House Administration, and it is on pre-order at 5,000 Naira only. This is my bank account detail here on the screen. You might want to write it down. And that's my what, um, if you already were in the WhatsApp group that I created or the Telegram group, whichever group you joined, you will see that there is um, a number there that you can reach me. So you can take down the phone, um, the our account details, 201-532-690, First Bank, Nancy Express, with a current account, and then you pre-order. It's current, the book is currently being printed. Oh, right. And in the next two weeks, I'll be dispatching to those who have already paid for theirs. So that is one. Secondly, I have another book called The School Administrator, um, Dear Educator, and it goes for 3,000 Naira, 3,500, but for between now and end of the year, you can get it at 2,500 Naira, especially if you buy along with this other one, which is the school administrator's companion. Some of you already have the school administrator's companion and the educator. So you might want to have um, the, um, the boarding house, effective boarding house administration. And in this book, I actually, um, talked about all of these things that I've shared with you and more. And if you buy this book, um, your school gets trained at a subsidized amount because we're currently getting books to start training because of the things that have happened. Um, some schools are scared and they want people to come and do their, an audit of their boarding house to tell them whether they are doing the right things or not. And to also train the boarding house team. So uh, I've actually partnered with one or two people and we're already doing boarding, and we're already getting books to have boarding house audits in boarding, house, in boarding schools. So you can book my organization to come and do a thorough boarding house audit of your school. We'll present to you where you need to improve and work with you on the, in the process. So you can send an email to info at nancyakpezu.com or pezusmeetconsulting at gmail.com. Or you can send a WhatsApp message to 0803-580-367. You can also connect with me on my, on my various social media platforms. My website is www.nancyakbezu.com. I have a Facebook group with lots of administrators there. Um, we are currently about 13,870 or so. It's called the Educational Administration Network. And then you can check my Facebook page, um, Nancy Mbai Pezu. You can also say, check my other Facebook page, which is Educational Administration with Nancy Ekpezu. You can check me on LinkedIn and connect at LinkedIn, um, Nancy Ekpezu. 
And my blog is www.nancyekbezu.com slash blog. You should also connect to me on YouTube because I'll be sharing some tips on boarding house administration. Um, the whole of January, I'll be sharing short clips um, here and there on um, tips on boarding house administration. So subscribe to my YouTube channel, Nancy Ekpezu. And if you're a school administrator, not just for boarding house, um, I have lots of videos there. There's even one on record keeping, information management, so many things. And you can just subscribe and you get that. Then if you want to subscribe yeah. to my um, newsletters, you can do that at, um, I didn't get, a, if you want to subscribe to my newsletter, you can do that at www.sendfox um, um, slash Nancy Ekpezu. So thank you so much for your time. Let me see if we have questions. I think I need to still share. Um, people have started leaving, but no problem. Okay, so that is it. So do we have questions? I would love to take questions before I say my thank you to you. So let's take questions. So I'm going to stop sharing here because we'll be having questions. And at this point, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate your time. It's actually a free webinar, so you're not paying anything for this, but some people have asked me, whether I can give it, um, a certificate of attendance um, for this. Um, and then some have asked me if I will send the slides. What I'm going to do is give you access to the video. If you attended this webinar, um, I will send, send you a, a link to the replay so that you can watch it over and over in case you missed any point. Okay, someone has the hand raised. Ugo Fumi, um, you want to ask a question? Yes, good evening, Madam Nancy. Good evening, good evening. Thank you very much for a wonderful um, presentation. Um, please, ma'am, my question is on the, based on the reporting procedure, when you spoke about the anti-bullying side, you talked about um, having a policy that monitors how these things are being reported. And then you also spoke about investigation, how the investigation will be carried out. And um, so my question is within that area. Okay. Uh, are you not making intelligence? I don't know. You know, there's something called the intelligence when you are, you know, trying to investigate a cause or yes. something. Yes. So <laughs> that line, I don't know if you get my question there. Yes. Okay, yeah, you must you must be very um careful. I'll tell you what happened once in a boarding house where I was heading. So it, there was a bullying case, and because my immediate subordinate actually liked the person and um, was very close to the person involved with the bullying and did not want to, actually did not want to report the case, which was a surprise. But because we had a check in place for how other people could report cases, it still got to me and I had to address the issue. So yes, you need to be intelligent. Um, I'm very careful with um, investigations. Um, you know, you, everybody knows their own work environment whether it's a toxic work environment, whether people cooperate, whether people are truthful. So you'll be able to apply what works in your own area. You'll be able to know what caution to apply um, in, your own, in your exact work environment. But the important thing is to get to the root of whatever it is and have it documented and dealt with. Well, how it will be done in one school may differ from another because of the peculiarity of the environment. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Thank you very much, ma. Okay. Yeah. There are some other hands that are up, right? Who else has their hands up? I do. Okay, Awuli Ajay. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Good and evening. thank you. Thank you, Nancy, for that wonderful expose. Uh, my question is, um, at what point does um, an act of bullying require um, a report to the police station? What kind of bully can one report to the police station? Aside the, the ones we know, 
the heating, the regular beating, the victim uh, victimization, and all that. What, what, to what extent can a bullying be reported to the police? They try to tell me they've gone to school, smuggle no. a gun in, or a weapon, a very um, little weapon, or whatever. Such cases should not be ignored. They should be reported. If a child comes in with, for example, something that he can, you know, maybe um, bump the whole place, you know, he's bullied people physically, now he wants to now um, get rid of people. You have to be very careful. The 21st century kids are not people to ignore. You have to be very vigilant. They could get to the point of even bringing a gun to your school. That it is not happening in Nigeria. Your own school doesn't mean it has not happened in Nigeria. <laughs> She's always mommy, 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 mommy. <laughs> Thank you so much. That answers it for me. Thank you. Yeah, if they're doing it, someone has a pen knife and you know they cannot, you've actually injured a child before now, they're coming with a weapon. You should, you don't ignore such. You should actually report um, cases of a child bringing a gun to school, bringing things that you know can I even kill another child. Those are not things that, uh, because they can't, even you that want to handle it, you don't know how the extent of the anger or whatever it is frustrating them. They could harm you. So you have better report, even for your own life, not only the lives of the children. Because now that even students are beating up teachers, you know, everybody needs to be cautious, right? Because a lot is going on. Thank you so much. That answers it for me. Thank you so much. Okay, so any other questions? Okay, there are people who have raised their hands here. Let me see. Um, one who, Ekene Eri. <coughs> Ekene Eri wants to say something. Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, mine is no, not much of a question, but more of an appreciation. Because okay. I'm listening to this webinar, there are so many things that I just learned just by listening to this webinar. I want to take this um, time to appreciate this knowledge you just shared to others. Wow. So it's a good one, and I can't wait to listen to the next one tomorrow. Okay, that's beautiful. And I'll be in Abuja in January. I'll be in Abuja, hopefully the whole of January. So if your school is in Abuja and you'd like me to visit, please reach out to me on WhatsApp or send me an email or just call my number. And I'll be very glad to come and visit your school and do an audit of the boarding house with my partner. I have a partner for boarding house audits. And one of them is in Abuja. So we'll be glad to come and have an audit and then train your school. If you also need us to have a physical training in Abuja, our school is starting where we can gather all body staff and have tons going to in-depth knowledge because what I've done today is more of an expose because of time. There is so much to boarding house management and administration, and we can go on and on and on. If you can see the five, we save about an hour. Do you know we have spent uh, one and a half hours already, and we're still going on. So there's so much to do actually. I think the truth is that the body house has been a neglected area in schools because we have paid more attention to curriculum and teaching and learning because that's what gets us in the news. Hey, all our students made the A's, you know? So the body houses have been just left there without much attention. So we need to pay attention to it now because it can mess up every other thing that we're trying to do in a school. The school gets in the news, for example, all of the academics and everything is done. And nobody's going to remember that in a hallway. All they will remember now is that things went wrong in your boarding house. And you don't need to, to wait till things go wrong. And please get a copy of my book. Quite a number of schools have, have booked, have, have bought theirs already. Like I said, I'll be dispatching um, two weeks from now. They're already printing. And so they'll be delivered to me and I'll be dispatching to everybody who has ordered. Even today, several people ordered. So please order your copies. We deliver to every state in Nigeria, and we'll be looking for how we can even deliver to Ghana later on. I don't know if there are any people, if there are people here um, from other countries, but I think it's mainly Nigerians because of the current incident that we had who have been attracted to attend. 
So we got to be house training and we got to do an audit of your staff and training. Okay, Hello, Nancy. Okay, Doris, yes. Uh, good evening. I'm so happy to be part of this and thank you so much for the knowledge you shared. But I don't know how this is going to be possible. Uh, I want you to also, not today, maybe tomorrow, um, throw, you shed light on how we could convince parents about uh, bringing children into the boarding house because with the current situation in the country, so many parents are beginning to take their children out of the boarding. What can we do to, you know, convince them or let them know that the boarding house is still uh, uh, what it should be? And, and, and these days, there's one century teachers who are willing to make the boarding house to be what it's supposed to be. So I don't know if you can be able to throw more lights on that for us maybe tomorrow. Well, I think for now people are just scared. It's just um, it's just in the heat of the moment. But knowing what Nigerians are like, I'm sure sooner or later people will come to, when things get back to normal again, they'll be able to you what you need now is to woo, woo them and gain their trust back. And one of the ways you can do that is to start communicating with them what and what you're doing to revise your operations. So you could even start by, yeah, oh, well, staff attended a training today. They have been taught this, this, that, that. These are the things we are putting in place. And then call for a meeting of the parents. Yeah, your okay. partners. You need to call a okay. meeting. Call a meeting of the parents and then just tell them that you need to hear from them, okay? So even if they have been cases that were swept under the, under the ground before now, I need to reopen them and just address them to, to get their trust back. Because maybe what this has done is send signals to them that, oh, and my child was bullied there, I kept quiet, I was bullied here. It's reminding them of instances when this could have been their child. And so they're acting out of fear. But believe me, you can rule them. Not all of them will withdraw their children because there are still some good boarding schools. I went to a boarding school. I'm sure some of us here did too. So I would advise that you call a meeting with your staff. And it would be even be nice that you, you book for a training so that they okay. know you're taking proactive steps. Okay. And that, what you have to do is to say, in view of the things that have happened, we know the fear that you are, you are currently nursing, but please be assured that this and this and this are the things that our school is doing. Start taking pictures of everything you are doing. Start a newsletter for the morning. Are you getting me? Yes, in your, a newsletter where you're documenting things that are happening in your boarding house and be sending to them regularly. Okay. So all the progress you're making now, call, call a meeting, tell them that you might know what their fears are, but that these and these are the things you're put in place. Then, then hear from them that what are their own fears about your boarding house. Are you getting me? So thank you so much. It's a good one. Thank you. So what, 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 what fears are they nursing particularly about your own body health? And what can they do to serve them better? But that in, in the so, meantime, these are the things that you're, you are proactively putting in place okay. for them to make sure that their kids are safe. And then when okay. those who return see improved services, they'll be the ones communicating to others. But it will take time and you need to be patient. Okay. Yeah, okay. you may not get all of them back immediately because really, it was really scary for parents. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. And then I forgot to say something. You know, when there's no communication with parents, they can imagine that a lot of things are going on that you're not telling them. One of the things I advise is when children come into your boarding house, after two weeks, send in a settling in report. The settling in report should show that you have actually taken time to study their children. We are glad that our day has joined us in the, in the, in the past two weeks in the boarding house. These are the areas that uh, we have got to make him settle down in the boarding house. These are the things that we have noticed that his challenges. These are the friends that he has made. 
These are areas that we will need an influence from you whenever he comes home, either on midterm or during the vacation to make an input or during visiting day to discuss with him. Write a very comprehensive report that shows that you're giving one-on-one -on -one attention. So that, you know, it's called a settling in report. So when parents get a settling in report, there's no way they'll feel that you're not watching out for their child unless what you're writing there are lies. But make sure you're saying the truth. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so like I said, is there any other question? Because we have spent one hour 45 minutes now, and I need to start closing for the evening. So tomorrow my my partner will be taking, we have a, I have a partner for this boarding house training, and um, he will be taking um, the, um, the second part, okay? So that's how we're going to upgrade. But I'll also be there and we'll take questions together. So thank you so, so much. And um, I hope that we will learn more and have a chance to meet. And if you're in Abuja or Lagos, I'll be glad to train, or even in any other city. Um, you can gather the people in your own city and then all of you could just come together and have a boarding house summit and I'll be glad to come in there to train. And for everybody who stayed till the end, there are 33 of you, I think I should give you a, a, a sample of a boarding house handbook. It norm I normally sell it for 10,000 naira, but maybe I could just send it to your emails for free. That would be so nice to at least say thank you for attending. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to be ending. Thank you so much, Max. All right, so thank you. Thank you so much. But I hope it's, I hope it's been a useful session. Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy, for your gesture. Well done. It's been, right. really worth, it's been really worth every time spent here. Thank oh, you so much. I'm thank you so, so, so thank much. Thank you God very you much. Richly. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. Thank so, you very, very much. All right. So, Mr. Wale Obafaye will be taking tomorrow's session. He's very loaded with information about boarding house and experience. He has been a supervisor in um, several boarding schools, and so he's going to be taking the session tomorrow. So, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, and I do not take it lightly that you stayed till the end. So tomorrow is another day. Please come on on time, 5 p.m., and then we'll conclude it tomorrow. And remember to get a copy of my book. Visit my website, connect with me on social media, and see you tomorrow. I will actually be uploading this on my YouTube channel, but it's going to be free for those who attended for the first two days. After that, I'm going to lock the link, and anybody who wants to access it may have to pay for it. All right, so it's been my pleasure and it's always my pleasure. I forgot to announce to you, in January, I'll be starting, um, I'll be training, I'll be starting my academy, the School Administrators Academy, where I'll be, I'll be teaching on school administration for three months. So some people have started enrolling already and it's 60,000 for the, for the three months and you can pay monthly if you want or pay for the whole um, at once, okay? All right, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, I think what we will do, um, maybe what I'll do is send you a form, or maybe um, you could just send me your email addresses to my email, and I'll forward to you the boarding house, um, um, the boarding house handbook. There's a generic one I made, and you can tweak it to suit your school or whatever, okay? Thank you. And Thank you so much, Nancy. The end because they are the only ones who will hear this announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right, you so, so much, Nancy. God bless bye you. Bye. So bye -bye. Enjoy bye -bye. the rest of your evening. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 bye.